People always had different visions of the future, being called utopia and dystopia. Utopia is an imaginary perfect world where everyone is happy and the social political order ensures human well-being. It is often combined with a democratic and classless form of government. In contrast to this positive future vision stands dystopia, an imaginary place where life is extremely difficult and a lot of unfair or immoral things happen. It presents a society deprived of human rights, oppressed and terrorized. Those in control have created a totalitarian social-political system which ruins the everyday life of the citizens. The aim of those visions is to portray alternative societies by offering a better or by projecting a dangerous one. Utopia and dystopia deal with elements that are not possible today but they are already imaginable in our everyday life. One element is science fiction. Science fiction contains futuristic science and technological innovations. An example is the movie James Bond. In the 1970s the movie's elements were very futuristic and unimaginable. In this time no one thought about the reality of these elements in our daily life or in some decades. Another element of utopia and dystopia is genetic engineering. Genetic engineering is the process of manually adding new DNA to an organism. The goal is to add one or more new traits that are not already found in that organism. Examples of genetically engineered organisms currently on the market include plants with resistance to some insects, plants that can tolerate herbicides and crops with modified oil content. An example for genetically modified food is the red pigment gene in apples. The process starts with finding an organism that naturally contains the desired trait. The DNA is extracted from that organism. This is like taking out the entire cookbook. The one desired gene must be located and copied from thousands of genes that were extracted. This is called gene cloning. The extracted red pigment gene can be used to produce, for example, red kiwis. Similar to this process is the pre-implantation diagnostic with human beings. So couples being infertile are able to get babies. Therefore the medicines take out a human egg cell from a woman and put it into a test glass. Then they take the man's sperm and combine these two sex cells. After this procedure it is possible for the medicines to analyze if the embryo is healthy. If not, they can destroy the embryo. Genetic engineering contains utopian as well as dystopian elements. Utopian elements are enough food for everyone because the plants can grow in different regions with different climate and other conditions. More and better harvest. Women being infertile are able to get a baby. It is possible to produce artificial organs. Ants combat hereditary disease. Dystopian elements are no long-term studies about consequences of gene manipulation. The question is, is a transfer from plants manipulated genes to humans genes possible? Humans dignity and nature are not respected. And designer babies could be created. Many utopian or dystopian elements and stories are presented in the media today. We chose three books, including the main subject Utopia Dystopia. The first example is 1984, written by George Orwell. This book deals with a dystopian world controlled by Big Brother and a party which takes only 15% of the whole population. In fact, people in this time are living with this attitude, war is peace, freedom is slavery and ignorance is strength. The children are manipulated to work against their parents and the government uses the children for control. Finally, there is no escape because you are always controlled, no matter what you are doing.
The novel presents dystopian elements like Big Brother spies you everywhere. Children are influenced and brainwashed by the government. The government invented a changed speech and changed the old history for the manipulation of the population. They get a lack of communication so that there is no possibility of rebellion. Brave New World, written by Aldous Huxley, is our second book. The story presents a dystopian world where the people are divided in case and treated like objects by the controlling government and their chosen people. People are psychologically manipulated and the embryos are cloned because the government needs them to keep the factories busy. Therefore, they want the people to get an instinctive hatred from books and flowers. All in all, the people want to keep the hierarchical system alive and the people cannot escape. The dystopian elements of this novel are psychological manipulation of the citizens, they get rid of natural behavior, they are cloned, they are divided into castes before birth, they have no individuality, they have an instinctive hatred from books and flowers because the people got as babies electrical shocks while seeing books and flowers. The Hunger Games, our third and last example, written by Susan Collins, presents a story in a dystopian future where the totalitarian nation is divided into 12 districts and the capital. Every year one girl and one boy from each district are selected to participate in the Hunger Games. The function of these games is to keep the consequences of a rebellion in the people's mind. The 24 boys and girls are forced to eliminate their competitors while the citizens are required to watch. Katniss Everdeen, with her 16 years volunteers for her sister Prim when she was selected as representative for District 12. Katniss and her counterpart Peter have to fight against tributes which were trained their whole life for these games. In contrast to the first two books, Hunger Games presents utopian and dystopian as well as science fiction elements. Utopian elements are the life in the capital, the friendships in the districts. The dystopian elements are the life in the districts because the people are suppressed, the arena and the fight between the capital and the district 13. Science fiction elements are the big firewall, the mutations of the tributes and other animals, the elevators and the room of the tributes, and the new technologies. Now you learned a lot about utopia and dystopia, but how can you connect the things you learned to your own individual life? First of all, we want to give you a connection to the past. Even the old Romans had a dictator suppressing the slaves by fighting in the arena until death for the joy of the population. These slaves were called gladiators. The Romans, as well as Hitler, are an example for cruel dictators wanting the people to die for entertainment. This is also one of the most important elements of the novel Hunger Games. To give you a connection to your daily life, we have the example of Assad, the dictator of Syria, who fights against his own population. There are also states controlling the media so that the population is not well informed about current politics. An example is Russia. But a connection to the future is very difficult. People have different visions of the future. Some have an utopian background but some have also dystopian visions. With this short video we gave you an overview about our great topic Utopia and Dystopia. We enjoyed working this out together and we hope that you will keep our video in mind.